One of the biggest questions that gun owners and gun advocates get when they stand up and speak out against gun control measures is, well, why do you need one? Rod Giltaka, the CEO of the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights, has answered this question more times than he can count. So you have guns for a variety of different purposes. You have target shooting, obviously sport shooting. You have hunting. Um, you have collecting. A lot of people collect exotic firearms or what have you. Uh, there are sentimental meaning. Sometimes people inherit guns from their from their uh, their parents or their grandparents or family. Um, and then on top of that, it's also a piece of property that if you needed to, you could defend your life with it. So it's it's many different things to many different people and multiple things to almost everyone. Right near the top of Rod's list was sports shooting, one of the fastest growing sports in Canada and therefore one of the biggest drivers for firearms ownership. Sports shooting is safe, legal and fun. And the Liberals said it would be unaffected by their May order in council prohibiting more than 1500 types of firearms and also by the firearms regulation bill C21. We're not targeting law-abiding citizens who own guns to go hunting or for sport shooting. The measures we're proposing are concrete and practical. As you're about to see, that simply is not true. Sport shooting comes in many forms, from target shooting at a local range to organized competitions like IPSC and 3-Gun to the Olympics. Yes, shooting is an Olympic sport and one in which Canada competes. The Tokyo Olympics kick off later this month and at them, Linda Keiko will be wearing the Canadian flag. Uh, I'm actually a civil engineer in my day job. Um, I, I'm a mom of three and a wife, and, uh, and then I also get to shoot for on the Olympic team. Like any Olympic sport, competitive shooting requires discipline. It requires control, and it requires practice. Practicing a sport that involves a handgun, however, means it's mired in regulation and restrictions, different than what any other sport would have to contend with. Under Bill C-21, any municipality could ban handguns. What's more, the law doesn't actually give a framework for what this ban could look like. Would they ban ownership? Would they ban transport? Would they ban storage? No one knows. This has cast a pall over competition shooters like Linda Keiko, who could theoretically see her sport, the one she competes in on Canada's behalf, effectively outlawed. That would be ugly super ugly so not only does it not make sense because i do right now i do a lot of dry training at home so um i i have young kids at home safety is paramount for me absolutely so i mean i'm gonna go through and i'm gonna un, you know like unlock them take off the trigger locks and i'm gonna do dry training and i'm gonna you know just be literally holding and squeezing the trigger as it goes click with a, like a safety in and i'm gonna be doing loads of that at home how am i gonna do that if i don't get to actually have it at home i'm literally gonna have to keep start going somewhere else for me right now, to be able to even come to the shooting range, it's a minimum of a three hour time commitment that I have to be away. And it's, there's very small windows in the day where I can get away that I have that kind of a time commitment where, you know, someone's looking after my kids and someone's watching out for them. And, you know, like there, there's no commitments where we have to pick one off or drop one off. So um, like that, that's, a, that's a big commitment for all of a sudden to have to down do that where I'm normally training dry fire, um, you know, up to six days a week, all of a sudden that now exponentially increases the amount of time that I now have to waste by traveling somewhere to be able to go and pick up my gun wherever I then have to store it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Requiring centralized storage is really just one possibility. Bill C-21 doesn't rein in what municipal governments can do to law-abiding handgun owners. Linda's pistol is a restricted firearm. Like any handgun owner, she's had to be rigorously vetted and is subject to daily security screenings by the RCMP. Her gun travels the world, helping her win medals for Canada, like at the 2015 Pan Am Games where she took home the gold. But the government still sees her and her gun as threats. I've been in shooting sports now for uh, not quite 30 years, aging myself. Um, my gun has never shot a shot that I haven't been in control of. My, my gun has never squeezed its own trigger. It has never loaded itself. It has never shot itself. Um, it doesn't do anything that I don't tell it to. And I think that that's the most important thing for people to understand. Guns are not dangerous unless they're put into somebody's hand that is dangerous. 
I know you obviously as a diligent, good citizen want to follow the regulations and follow the laws and, and you roll with the punches in that way, but do you feel personally targeted by some of the restrictions yeah, that we see? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I was on the, like the, the federal advisory committee um, and I felt like I was going to make um, a positive impact um, probably until C-71 came out. I was like, hmm, uh, I don't think that was quite what we had discussed or advised. And it was very disheartening to kind of see see that come out. And, and I think it's unfortunate. I mean, having someone look you in the eye and say, we don't want to impact law-abiding citizens, so we're going to make a new law. What? Like, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Um, and it was, it was pretty, it's pretty frustrating to, on one hand, I'm, I'm literally, I'm going to the Olympics, I get to represent Canada. It is one of the greatest privileges um, that I ever get to do, that I get to wear the maple leaf and represent Canada. It is such a privilege. And on the other hand, I'm so devastated that I have no idea if at some point I'm going to get thrown in jail because I've missed, I've missed something, because I haven't been notified. Um, I'm still, I'm still waiting to get, you know, any sort of a notification about like the order in council that was sent out last year because I didn't, I didn't get mailed a notice. It would have been nice as a firearms owner as a licensed firearms owner, restricted owner, that maybe, maybe I would have gotten a notice just saying, hey, there's a new regulation that just got put out. You should check to see if anything impacts you. I'm still waiting. Some people are surprised to learn that pistol shooting is an Olympic sport. It's not all that surprising when you see what goes into it. Linda let us sit in on a training session. She locks her feet in, often for as long as 25 minutes. She has to reset her aim on every shot and she only has three seconds between shots to do it. Linda warned us before the target came back that she hadn't been to the range in a while, but the warning wasn't necessary. That, that's actually pretty good. Alan Harding is another competitive shooter on Canada's national team. He competed in the 2015 Pan Am Games in Toronto and has partaken in a number of competitions around the world. He lives on British Columbia's Sunshine Coast. It's a beautiful spot. That's where I visited with him and actually went out to the range with him. He's had to rearrange his life to get around some of the regulations that he sees are inevitable in his sport. This is a restricted handgun. Okay. Yeah. So it falls under um, all of the, any sort of potential handgun ban type okay. thing. So and, this, and this one looks a little bit more like a normal handgun, but same, same deal? Same deal. Yeah. Um, this one takes five shots though. Trigger weight is a little bit higher, but um, yeah, it's, it's for Olympic 25 meter pistol. So if your municipality were to put a handgun restriction in, you would not be allowed to conceivably take these to the range to train. That is correct. Or even take them to competitions. Yeah. You're actually representing Canada yep. at these competitions and, and now <laughs> there's some uncertainty on, on how you'll be able to and, train. And I have a lot of layovers in Toronto. <laughs> 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 Pretty much going into, yeah, anytime I go to Europe, a lot of the times I, I stop in Toronto. So yeah. I still don't even know what's what's going to happen if uh, uh, even just as a uh, on layover, just transient, whether those same same restrictions would apply, right? So, so how, how do you feel when you're you're representing Canada, you're bringing home awards for Canada, and the government is now making it so you don't even know how you're going to be able to train in a year's time? I don't feel good. <laughs> it's um, I it, to me, it's just it's 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 heartbreaking, and it just doesn't make any sense. We already have like really restrict like restricted laws and that kind of mm -hmm. thing to to get um, firearms. So. To just like then go after sports shooters and um, it doesn't make any sense to me. Alan's concerns about transiting through Toronto are well placed. Toronto Mayor John Tory has been one of the most enthusiastic municipal leaders about banning handguns. If the Liberals' Bill C-21 passes, municipalities would have carte blanche to impose whatever restrictions they want. This is particularly ironic from Toronto given its perpetual ambition of being an Olympic host city and the fact that some restricted handguns are pieces of Olympic sporting equipment. I was able to gain a newfound appreciation for the skill and dedication required to be an athlete at this level by watching Alan at work. As with Linda Keiko, Alan was a bit modest about his performance, but it looked good to me. I sat down with Alan later on and asked him if he thought the politicization of guns would turn people away from sports shooting. 
I was shocked to learn how he's had to literally rearrange his life simply to ensure he's able to continue to practice and compete as he always has. It, absolutely. It, it's already really difficult, right? I mean, I've, I've had to move outside of the city just to be able to train and, and it's, it's, it's difficult. I don't know how people can really get exposed to the sport and to, uh, to be able to um, go through all of the development you know, long term to get to, to, to any sort of level. While the difficulty in taking up competitive shooting may be increasing, it hasn't completely turned away new folks from joining the hobby. Amanda Fisher lives out in Alberta. She decided a couple of years ago after being anti-gun her entire life to shoot a pistol. Then she decided for fun to join a competition and the rest, as they say, is history. I was anti-gun my whole life. I wasn't grown up around them. I grew up in a rougher part of um, Halifax, so uh, well, Dartmouth really, and um, so I didn't really understand guns and because I wasn't around them, I didn't feel safe around them. Um, so in order for me to feel safe, I took my PAL course. Um, my husband shoots, he hunts, and so I thought it would be best if I took my PAL course so I could understand what is in my home, just get that education. Um, and so I bought my first pistol, and I did have my education, but I just wanted to be more comfortable with it. So I took my black badge course, and with that is the prerequisite for IPSC. My plan was not to shoot IPSC though, it was just to get the, the experience, the live fire training and the holster training. Um, so that way, when I go to the range, I could feel more safe. Um, so I did that and um, my friend that I did it with, he's like, let's just shoot one match, just shoot one match so that way you can get your pin and your certificate. And I'm like, okay, I'll shoot one match. So we went, we shot our first match in Edmonton and I, we, we were both hooked. It was, it was amazing. One of Amanda's shooting sports is called Three Gun, a fast-paced event involving, as the name suggests, three guns, a shotgun, a rifle along the lines of an AR-15, and a handgun. At least two of those three are in the Liberal government's crosshairs. But now with the OIC, I'm unable to shoot Three Gun because I am unable to use my Daniel Defense AR-15. Um, so that has killed that sport for me. Um, I don't have another gun that I can replace that with, so that's quite unfortunate. So how do you feel when the government says we're not going after sport shooters? Well, they most definitely are. They may say that they're not, but I lost the sport. And now potentially this sport, which is my main sport, could be taken away because I won't be able to have access to my pistol. That doesn't make sense. Why, why would you take? Why would you take it away? You say you're not going to take it away, but you're taking it away. Could I use an alternative? Because that's what they. That's what they've been saying for three gun. You can use an alternative. For a pistol shooting competition, if you take the pistols away, the most I can do is use my finger and point. Like. Well, that might also be banned before long. Who knows? Even if Amanda were to seek out alternatives, she would not only be starting from scratch with her training, having to learn a new platform and a new style of firearm, but she would also face the potential of future prohibitions. There are a few variants that I could get, but it's not, it's not the same. It acts differently. Um, the, it, all of the mechanisms are in different places so it's yeah it's it's a challenge and then there's the uncertainty of what happens if you embrace a new one and then six months down the road that one's gone too i know like do, do i look on the list every time i go to the range to see if something else popped up on that list we didn't have a full course set up but amanda was still able to demonstrate the speed and excitement present in her competitions And like a true ambassador to the sport, Amanda thought the day wouldn't be complete if I didn't give it a go myself. I won't show you my target to keep some level of dignity, but I had fun and everyone was safe, which is business as usual for Canadian sport shooters. Isn't that fun? How are any of these athletes expected to compete at the national level, at the international level, when their hobby in some jurisdictions will be criminalized? 
The government's not been answering that question. More importantly, the government has not even been asking that question. Linda and Alan say there's been no consultation with them about the impact of these, and this is even after Linda sat on the government's firearms advisory committee, a committee whose recommendations went unnoticed and unacknowledged by the government that struck the committee. These competitors have decided to embrace a sport for whatever reason that they're good at, that they enjoy, and that gives Canada something to celebrate, athletes to celebrate. There are other people who embrace firearms not by choice, but because they need to, because it's a way of life for them. We'll tell their stories next. This is Assaulted, Justin Trudeau's War on Gun Owners.